All right, continuing with part three. We are gonna end on this one here, part three. Now we finally come to the last principle, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Y'all ain't hearing that. Gender manifests on all planes. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. I don't think y'all understand this. Let me show you something. As we go into the Hermetica by Walter Scott. Okay, and this is another book of Enoch, Thoth, Hermes, Trimagistus, um, Tahuti, whatever you want to call them. They one they're the same people, just different names at different times. Now to show you that the essence of God is formatted within the Hermetic laws, we start right here. For I deem it impossible that he who is the maker of the universe in all its greatness, the father or mother or master of all things, can be named by a single name, though it be made up of ever so many others. I hold that he is nameless, or rather that all names are names of him. See, the Holy Quran talk about that. All beautiful names belong to Allah. And it's talking about the universal mind. Wait a minute. Let me show you what I'm talking about before I continue. So we know that the all is mine. See, right here. Hermes. He's talking to his son, Tet. Mine, my son, Tet. Is the very substance of God. See that? If there is. He said. If indeed there is a substance of God. Of what nature that substance is. God alone knows precisely. You see it. Alright. Jumping back where I left off. I just had to prove that little point right quick. For he in his unity. Is all things so that we must easily call all things by his name or call him by the names of all things. He filled with all the fecundity of both sexes in one. Wait a minute. Let's get down here. Let me get to the point. Shit. You say then. Tremagistus, that God is bisexual? Yes, Ascalipius, which is Imhotep, and not God alone, but all kinds of beings. Let me stop. <laughs> but all kinds of beings, whether endued with soul or soulless, nothing that exists can be barren. For if all things that now exist are deprived of fertility, it will be impossible for the now existing races to endure, endure forever. Now don't get this shit twisted. Because they ain't talking about no homosexual shit. That God is bisexual. It is only talking about the law of gender. Let me show you what I mean. Now we still in the Hermetica. I just went to the next page. And there. Were need that I should. That I should tell. Of the compelling force. With which. This sacrament binds men and women together. Were it not that each one of us, if he directs his thoughts upon himself, can learn it from his inmost feeling. Oh shit, we're talking about feelings now. For if you note that supreme moment when through interaction, without pause, we come at last to this, that either sex infuses itself into the other and one giving forth its issue they, they talking about basically they talking about fucking okay that's just what it is and the other eagerly taking hold on it and laying it upon and laying it up within yeah they talking about fucking you will find that at that moment through the intermingling of the two natures the female acquires masculine vigor and the male is relaxed in feminine languor. Now what they're trying to tell you, what thought is trying to tell you, even if you are a man, 
you produce a feminine energy when you about to bust one. All right. And we know what bust one means. And for a woman, when she having sex, she produces a masculine, vigorous energy. So even within the male and female body is a hidden secret through their secretion. Okay, sexual secretion. So this is just the law of gender. Everything has its masculine and feminine side to it. So even if you are a male and you possess only the masculine, not truly exactly, because there's a feminine energy hidden within you. Because I ain't never in my life heard one dude that I know, and I ain't never experienced shit either, of uh, about to bust one and goddamn you, you get all masculine. Hell no, nah, that shit make a man feminine as hell. So it is with a woman. Women get strong and vigorous than the motherfucker. Start locking their legs around you and shit. Scratching all in your back. That's some masculine ass energy. All right. So this is that secret that I was telling you about. And part one that I know y'all ain't going to be, y'all ain't going to believe this shit. But this is what it is. So really focus on your body when you're going through it and you will see what type of energy you present. So this is just the law of gender. Let me read on because this shit interesting. And so this so sacramental act, sweet as it is. You heard that even thought got there. He said, sweet as it is. Alright. And a thing that must needs be done is done in secret. Least if it were done openly, the ignorant should mock. And thereby the deity manifest in either sex. Through the mingling of male and female should be put to the blush. And the more so if the act is exposed to the eyes of employers men. Woo! See? This is what I'm talking about connecting dots. So when you read books like the Bible. And yes, the only book that you read. And you don't get no true cause and effect. All you got is belief. You ain't going to get no understanding of this shit. That's why you got to take other books and puzzle pieces. Sort of like how, how when you read the book Falls and Ruins of Empires by Count Vonet. He tells you in the book that what the Europeans did was they broke our spirituality in fragments. And they called one portion of our spirituality Christianity. And another portion Islam. Another portion Judaism. Another portion Buddhism, another portion, Buddhism. They just started. Well, actually, they started the Islam, Christianity, according to the book, and Judaism. All right, but our spirituality was broken in fragments. So you have to puzzle piece our religions and go into the esoteric teachings of it, the shit that I be given, in order to get your fragmented spirituality back and puzzle piece to its to its full um totality. Now, as we continue to finish off with this law of gender, this is what we read. This principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything, as we just saw in this book, The Hermetica. All right. We just saw that in the man and in the female body, there is masculine and feminine energy. It's just a, in a secret spot. All right, jumping back. The masculine and feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only on of the physical plane, but of the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. We just talked about that shit. On the higher planes, it takes higher forms. But the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual is possible without this principle. An understanding of its laws will throw light on many a subject that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything 
and every person contains the two elements or principles or the or this great principle within it him or her every male thing has the fem the female element also we just talked about that shit every female contains also the male principle we just talked about that shit if you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation generation and regeneration you must understand the study this hermetic principle see we just talking about we just got done talking about uh generations and regeneration through sex how the male produce this feminine energy and the female produce a masculine energy so this is the principle of gender see gender is in everything everything has its masculine and feminine principle gender manifests on all planes this is the form this is the formation of the universal consciousness itself all right this is the blueprint of creation All right, I think y'all get the point. So, the question must be asked. It must be asked. What stopped people from walking with God? See, we know that Enoch walked with God. We know that Elijah walked with God. This is according to the Bible. Now, we know Enoch has had to walk with God. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left all these books. And he got more books than the ones that I got. He got tons of books, okay? A lot of them hid in Germany. A lot of them hid over there in the British Museum, in the Vatican, okay? He wasn't called the God of Wisdom wisdom for nothing, Tahuti, which is Enoch. So, what caused these beings to stop walking with God? Now, we know, according to what we just read, that this God, is the is the luciferic energy because according to what we just read in the book of Enoch he was taught by Uriel all things which means that we all possess the ability to walk with God now we could walk mentally with God because when you think about something you put your mind in your thoughts are traveling okay so you are where you put your thoughts at because you at the core of your being, really and truly, you are consciousness. All right? The very essence of who you are is consciousness. We know that at the core of your physical being, you are light. You, you know, your, your light body, which is the, the core in your cells, the photons. But the true essence of who you are, you are consciousness. But I'm going to tell you. It didn't stop. There's still beings that walk with God today that have a fully functional pineal gland and a highly activated kundalini. Let me show you what I mean. But these people are hunted and killed by the CIA because the CIA feel that these people are threats. And this is why they fear the rise of a black messiah based off certain individuals. Let me show you what I mean. In this book, The Ascension Mysteries, Revealing the Cosmic Battle Between Good and Evil by David Wilcox, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Right here, we go to the Black Jesus. Listen at this. One of the most surprising stories Jacob ever told me concerned a man they called the Black Jesus. He said, This was highly classified and was definitely talking out of school to tell me about it at all. Apparently, in the 1960s, a man appeared in Africa who had full ascended abilities. He could read people's minds, materialize objects out of the thin air, communicate telepathically, levitate himself, and teleport his body from one location to another. He was a spiritual teacher who emphasized love, peace, service to others, and forgiveness as the common core that unified all the great religions. Now, let me say something before I continue. If you go back to part one, 
of these videos that I made concerning unmasking the universal laws. I talk about once you activate this Kundalini, these are the abilities that one would come that one would uh, manifest and have. Remember I talked about. Um, well I ain't mentioned that. Materializing objects out of thin air. But I should have mentioned it. But anyway you got it right here. But I, I mentioned telepathy. Levitation. Teleportation. And this. Is a person that walked with God. Okay Uriel. See you go in the Bible. And what it tell you. You can blaspheme against God and be forgiven. You can blaspheme against the uh Son and be for, uh, or whatever, son to be forgiven, but you can't blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, which is the electrical current, which is the Kundalini, and be forgiven because that is actually the most high and, and um, manifestation on this plane of existence. All right, otherwise, the Bible wouldn't say, I mean, the book of Enoch wouldn't say that Uriel taught Enoch all things in creation. This is what it is. You can't even become a god until you raise your kundalini. Or your Uriel. Or your Lucifer. Which is the light bringer. Which brings light to your pineal gland. Which is a miniature universe. It's just dormant. Which represents Osiris being slain by his brother in a, band in a, in a mummified bandage. Then he awakens when the, once the kundalini um, or almond. Raw, which is the hidden light, which is a kundalini, awakens him. So, like I said, Isis was chanting, um, and what does Amen do? The word Amen stimulates the pineal gland, and she was calling on Amen Raw, which is the hidden sun, which is the luciferic energy. All right? I still don't think y'all get it. Wait a second. Um, I know y'all remember in this book, right? Let me just bring it back one more time for just in case you, it might have slipped your mind. Okay. Grew eyes there from a childhood into manhood, being taught by my father, the elder mister. All right. Until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. Again, if you go to part one, I'll break it all the way down. What he's talking about concerning the Kundalini, how he was taught all the wisdom. Okay, through this electrical current, which is intelligence within itself. But continuing on, all right, he was a spiritual teacher. We said that already. The cabal does not want anyone to develop these abilities. This why you ain't seeing people today with those abilities as far as walking with God, a.k.a. Having a highly activated kundalini that rotates in a microcosmic orbit. This is why, because they search these people and hunt them down and try to kill them. See, the cabal does not want anyone to develop these abilities. And if they find out that someone has them, they will hunt those people down and terminate them with prejudice. The cabal, meaning the Illuminati, all right made several attempts to assassinate this man. Wait a minute, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you who he is. Let me show you a couple of them. But let me show you the one they talking about. This is who they talking about. Simeon Toko. Simeon Toko, that's who they talking about. Right there. That man. That's the one they hunted down and was trying to kill they killed him, but his body kept regenerating. They cut him up in pieces. His body regenerated. They ran him over with a tractor. Back and forth, his body regenerated. Simeon Toko, when they had him on a plane and had shot him, his body regenerated. They shot the shit out of him. Some, I don't know how the hell they pulled that off in the airplane, but this is what was documented. He stopped the plane in mid out. The plane didn't move, period. Everybody got scared as hell. And then after Simeon Toko got done saying something, it started back moving again. And the sending master. This is why J. Edgar Hoover them had this big ass um, agenda as far as killing off the rise of a black messiah. Because of people like 
Simeon Toko. Not just Simeon Toko. Let me show you another one. Here we have the founder of Maridia is Sheikh Amadou Bamba. An eminent Sufi master from Senegal. This is another ascended master. See, he had the ability to materialize and dematerialize. So, all you see is one leg and one hand. These are ascended masters. These are the ones they're afraid of. Look at this. The life of Sheikh Amadou Bamba is a testimony of his commitment to the revival of authentic Islam. What's authentic Islam? The Sufis, because they study the esoteric teachings, which is the same thing that the ancient Egyptians taught. All right? This is him. Let me show you another one. See, here we have Simon Kambangu, the true third secret of Fatima, Fatima revealed and the return of Christ. Let me get to the point. Simon Kambungu was a prophet, left to right and tortured and tortures in a prison. He died there October 1951 after 30 years. There are Africans alive at this writing who were brought back from the dead by Simon Kambangu. And there are people still living who watched him do it. The claim is that Simon Kambangu healed the sick, made the lame walk, returned the sight to the blind, in hearing to the deaf, and even brought an infant dead three days back to life. Kambangu performed these miracles, miraculous deeds over a period of five months from May 1921 to September 12, 1921. Scholars do not dispute that this man performed these miracles, there is simply too much testimony about it. Tommy Kambangu, an ascended master. All right, this is why they feel the rise of a black messiah, because it is black people that possess this serpentine energy. Okay, and they know that once we go through the Aquarian constellation, what is going to happen? This is why nobody is walking with God. Even though if, if they is, they ass better stay here. Otherwise, they're going to wind up like Simeon Toko. Meaning they're going to be tortured and punished. But see, Simeon Toko willed his death, actually. Now, let me continue with this. All right. See, the cabal made several attempts to assassinate him, this man. They made attempts. Because they couldn't kill his ass. See, this way you get like a Wolverine in the X-Men. You shoot him and shit his body, just keep regenerating. He consistently regenerated his body after each attack, no matter how lethal it seemed to them. Seemed to be. Finally, the man was told that they had given up. He was far too powerful. There was nothing they could do to stop him, and they were going to surrender. They invited him to a major world summit and told him they would reveal him to all humanity. Yeah, fucking right. So he could share his, his message. He was brought on board a military transport aircraft. Once airborne, he was shot repeatedly. They talking about Simeon Toko now. The first picture I showed. The up close picture with the man with the face. Wait a minute. I don't think y'all. I don't think y'all remember what I'm talking about. Give me a second. That's who they talking about. Simeon Toko. That's him right there. Simeon Toko. So now check this out. After they invited the man to a world summit, told him they would reveal him to all of humanity so he could share his message. Look what these motherfuckers did. Look what they do to him. He was brought on board a military transport aircraft. Once airborne, he was shot repeatedly. His body was divided into many different sections, each of which was stored in a high 
super which was stored in a super high tech energy shield container. Hey, there's some shit. Jet aircraft rushed up to the plane in sequence and scrambled to con and scrambled the containers all over the earth. And this shit, they just throw the man body parts all over the planet. As far apart as possible. The contents were then throughout and completely destroyed. Ain't that some shit? It was hoped that this would prevent him from being able to regenerate himself. After this was done, the man materialized directly into the offices of the people who had ordered his murder. Shit. See, now y'all can understand why somebody like Bill Gates can make a big ass balloon. Supposed to be making this big ass balloon to block out the sun rays. Because they know once these solar promises coming from this Aquarian constellation that Jesus mentioned in the Bible talking about Aquarius. Keep going till you see the man by the, by the well with the pitch in his hand. They know we're going to be in our Christ soon. And we're going to have abilities like Simeon Toko. Okay, Simon Kambangu. Shay Amadu Bamba. They know we're going to have these abilities to materialize and dematerialize and do all types of extraordinary shit. Materialize objects out of thin air. And guess what? If you can materialize objects out of thin air, fuck buying food. That shit going to crash any fucking way. They know this. This shit is real. And I know this because I actually raised my kundalini. Okay, so I know. Shit. And I did some amazing shit. I ain't do all that though. But I did some amazing shit. So I know. Ain't no belief. Belief is you don't know. Okay, anyway. He said this after he um, appeared to them in the office. There were no visible signs of damages to his body. He said your desire to prevent me from living on earth is so strong that I am forced to honor it for now. <laughs> this shit for, for now now. That means he coming back. He like, fuck, I'm still coming back. I will be leaving you shortly. See, shortly. However, in the future, many more people will develop. Will develop. He talking about this part. He talking about the ascension. Abilities just like me. Once that happens, you will no longer be able to stop us from making this world a peaceful place for everyone. Nah, bitch. You motherfuckers ain't gonna stop shit. You ain't gonna be able to stop shit. So once it is, y'all take heed. Hope y'all learned something from this. If not, whatever, goddamn. I'm just shooting information out there. All right? But until then, peace.